Tom Clark's Main Event is a Boink Studios production. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Boink Studios. And check us out on boinkstudios.com where you can see all of our projects, past, present, and future. And now, on with the show. This is Daddy's Show. Step off. <laughs> Hey, hey, what is up? Welcome back to the program, folks. Thank you for tuning in. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tom Clark, and this is Tom Clark's Main Event. We're back once again here on Facebook Live. Glad you are with us. We're also recording today. The show will post on YouTube, and it's always available on boinkstudios.com. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, and iHeartRadio. This is episode number 146, and yes, we're moving right along here on Facebook Live. I want to thank everyone for joining us here, of course, and for coming back each and every week. Much thanks to Heidi Ryan and the whole crew at Wrestling Rumors for giving us this platform. We do greatly appreciate it. So, episode number 145 was the Friday Free For All 3, where we just let it roll and hit on all kinds of stories and topics from WWE AEW, and New Japan, and much more in the wrestling business. We covered everything last week, folks. We took your questions, comments, words of wisdom, as we usually do, but we just had a whole lot more of it. But this week, we're on to other big things, so here we go. This time, the main event is Extreme Rules, Fight for the Fallen, and the G1 Climax Preview. That was a mouthful, and now I need a nap. So... How's everyone doing out there? How's everyone uh, doing? Jen, what's up? Right when I get done with the intro, Jen hits me. Jen hits me with that great big comment. Did you hear that boom? Yikes! I accidentally kicked the desk. You know what they say, folks? If it's live, it was supposed to happen. Tell that to the people listening to the show on iTunes later. They just got that explosion in their ear canal. They're like, what the? Yeah. So, sorry folks listening that didn't watch. You missed all the excitement. Jen, look what you did. You screwed everything up. I'm just playing. Uh, not my birthday, Frank. It's actually my mom's birthday, but thank you anyway. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Hello. Good morning, Ms. Lopez. Another regular here on the show. Thank you very much. Everyone's still kind of coming in today. We just did the intro for the show. We are now recording officially. This is the official episode of Tom Clark's Main Event. Hope everyone had a good week. Hope everyone is doing well out there in Facebook land. Um... Hope everyone has watched some good wrestling this week. I know I have. Last Saturday, uh, the boy and I traveled uh, to Charlotte to see the PWX show where we got to see Juice and Thunder Liger. So uh, if any of you guys have not looked at my uh, at my Facebook page, please go check it out. Uh, I post a lot of photos and videos from the event. It was very cool to see Liger. I've All these years I've been a fan before the Monday Night Wars, during the Monday Night Wars, after the Monday Night Wars. I never got to see Liger live. This was his last appearance in North Carolina. And it's his last year in the business, folks. He's officially hanging up in January of next year at Wrestle Kingdom. Two-day event next year that's going to be his retirement match. And I'm guessing it'll be against Minoru Suzuki, but I can't swear to it. That's my guess. So uh, I got to see one of his last United States appearances. So it was very awesome. So if you haven't got a chance to check that out, please go check that out. So uh, that was pretty cool. I've, we've got an NXT show coming up July 28th. And Concord, we got Front Row, baby. Can't wait for that. Then we've got WWE Clash of Champions in September. There's also another PWX show coming August 24th uh, in Charlotte. And I believe we're going to go try to see that as well. So... I'm anxious to see that. Hello, uh, uh, Randall. Hello, Anthony in Danville, Kentucky. So, Jen has asked me what's my opinion on Aleister Black uh, opponent for you. Cesaro. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens, man. I'm, I'm, uh, I like Cesaro. I'm a fan of both those guys. So, yeah, it's going to be pretty cool. So we've got a really big show here today, folks. As we say, a lot of wrestling happening lately. This is a massive weekend for the business. Uh, in one night, we have uh, uh, we have AEW. We have the Evolve show happening on the WWE Network, a first for that company. Uh, and we also have the G1 Climax tournament the same night. And then Sunday, it's you guessed it, Extreme Rules, folks. Uh, I'm smiling because this is the best time to be a pro wrestling fan in a long time. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked. I can't wait. I'm going to have probably all three shows going tomorrow night on three different screens. That's how we roll, baby. So, um, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to it. What's up, Chris in Tennessee? Uh, so no impact news, Sean. I don't have much for you on that. I need to really stay up to date more on impact, um, uh, more than I do. Montrese, all that's going on tomorrow night. Um, I don't, uh, uh, 
I don't know what's. I don't know if there's any Ring of Honor. I know Ring of Honor is coming up soon, but I want to say it's next Friday. Ring of Honor typically runs their events on Fridays. So uh, let's see. Uh, Mass Hysteria is coming up for Ring of Honor. Uh, let me get you a date on that in case you're wondering. Mass Hysteria on July 21st. Yeah, so that's coming up. Lowell, Massachusetts. Um, I just did uh, um, uh, my subscription to uh, Honor Club last week. I went ahead and, and did the upper tier uh, subscription, which unlocks all the pay-per-views and all the content, so I don't have to pay any extra. It seems silly I was paying extra for the monthly pay-per-views that aren't are already included in the uh, in subscription service. I'm like, why am I doing this? It seems kind of spending more money than I need to, so I just re-upped last week. So, you know, anyway. Um, uh, wanted to get everything out there. So is yes, Larry, the AAW event is free. Um, uh, BR Live does not cost when you sign up for a uh, um, BR Live. You're not paying anything. It's not a monthly fee. It's just pay as you go. So yes, it will be. It's free on BR Live. In the rest of the world, it's on Fight TV, Fight TV app. So, um, Johnny Impact LX contracts are up. If I were Impact, I'm head to AEW. Johnny Elite. That would be my guess, but I don't know for sure. Um, that that's just something that uh, oh, is it free for U.S. only? Well, there you go, Lance. So uh, uh, yeah, Carlos going to SmackDown live in Miami two weeks. Carlos, have fun. What's up, Alan? Welcome to the show. So as we said before, man, uh, we're kind of bouncing right now, but we got a lot to get to. We got a really big show. Um, we got a, a long way to go and a short time to get there. <laughs> I'm Eastbound, just watch Old Bandit run. That's a, There's a throwback for you. Anybody know what I'm talking about? We're just going to move on. All right, folks, let's go ahead and hit the Extreme Rules card. Actually, you know what? Uh, let's go in the opposite order. Let's go Saturday to Sunday. Sound good? All right, let's start with AEW. We're going to read down the card, then we'll take a comment. Sound good? All right, so here we go. The AEW pre-show. AEW's pre-show no, so far have been notoriously extremely bad. Uh, I shouldn't say extremely bad. I should say extremely really bad. Because uh, they've been, they've been a little tough to watch. If I'm being honest, a little silly, a little too much haha and comedy for my liking. But here we go in a six-man tag that doesn't seem to make any sense at all. Darby Allen, Joey Janela, and Jimmy Havoc, uh, two of of the three, which I'm not very high on. That'd be Havoc and Janela, if I'm being honest. Versus Sean Spears, Sammy Guevara, and MJF. Uh, MJF, uh, the standout talent among the six of them. Spears, uh, very good at what he does. You know, we'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm sure there'll be a little bit of comedy, a lot of violence, that kind of thing. Uh, this, They've got a big responsibility for this this pre-show, man. Let's hope they nail it this time. The main card, Chris Jericho, is going to appear. Don't know what he's got to do, what he's going to do. He's got some sort of segment ironed out or planned out, I should say. Um, also, we have the Lucha Brothers versus SCU, the Scorpio Sky and Frankie Kazarian. Uh, should be a good match uh, all the way around. Brandy Rose versus Ali. Brandy has got to step up, folks. Uh, Brandy's not exactly been what you would call the most impressive pro wrestler between the ropes, if we're being honest about it and being forthright and everything. Uh, so, yeah, not exactly the best that you've ever seen, but she's got an opportunity to step up and do what she can do against Ali. Hey, man, Paige versus Kip Sabian. I wouldn't be surprised if the Jericho segment takes place before, after, or during that match. Kenny Omega versus Shima, uh, first time I think ever for them. And then, of course, the main event, the Young Bucks versus Cody and Dustin Rose. The Brotherhood back together again um, after a double or nothing. So, there is your AEW card. What are our thoughts on AEW? Hmm. So, uh, uh, Miss Lopez says, what do I think of MJ MJF? I think MJF... Uh, is one of the top heels, top performers in the business today. I love the guy. I think he's fantastic. Um, I love everything he does. There, I've never seen him cut a bad promo. I've never seen him have a bad match. Um, MJF is extremely good, and it's it's disgusting how young this kid is. But he's young, uh, and he's this good, this young. Uh, he reminds me of Okada, of Okada in as much as he's so good, so young. You know what I mean? So he's only going to get better later. And I'm not trying to put he and Okada on the same level, but I'm talking about uh, Okada just understood the business and he adapted so quickly and has the body for it and the mind for it. I think MJF is much in the same vein. More on the mic, maybe, I would say, than Okada. You know what I mean? In terms of charisma and whatnot. But I think in, in terms of how much he's adapted and how much he gets it and understands it, I think MJF is up there um, among the best today, especially on the mic. Okay, let's clarify that. But yeah, I love the guy. He's a great heel. God, he just naturally gets heat, man. Uh, you're right. He never breaks character. Um, 
Mark says he just wants more from AEW. Mark, cut them a little bit of slack, and here's why I'm saying that to you. WWE has had opportunity after opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to impress you, and they continue to fail, okay? Maybe not every week, maybe not all of you all the time, but they continue to drop the ball. AEW's had this much time, and WWE's had this much. You see, huge difference, folks. So give them benefit of the doubt. I'm not on their payroll. I have nothing to gain by making you like them or, or hate them. Okay, uh, that's just me giving you a bit of advice. Roll with it if you want to. If you don't, that's cool too. But uh, I would say let's give the opportunity to to pull it out and see what we what they can do. Going to watch Evolve at lot Kenny Mega whining about to be putting this event on a WWE network. Well, Danny, listen, man, I I agree with you, but to a certain extent. But at the same time, you got to expect these comments are going to start getting made as these two companies. I don't want to say go head to head, but exist in the same environment, exist under the same sky. You know what I mean? They both uh, inhabit this small planet, right? So that's what's going to happen. They're going to be very aware, very cognizant of each other. So that's what you're going to get. So um, uh, uh, we'll see how it all plays out. But I, I do get uh, I do get what you're saying. So let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, so... Um, uh, anyone else out there got anything to say about the AEW thing? I think Cody and Gold Dust will be fantastic. Um, uh, because, uh, they're brothers and so they know they both get this. They've both been waiting a long time to, to do things like this and, uh, you know, not have, uh, not be, uh, restrained or be told what to say or how to say it when, where to do and where to do it and how to do it. You know what I mean? Get out from underneath the umbrella of WWE and suddenly have a ton more freedom. So, um, I'm anxious to see what goes down there. Uh, see, Robbie says, here conflict the things about Cody's chair show. Some say it was fake because he got hit on one side of the head and wind was on the other. Some say the actual rip in the back of his head was all fake. <laughs> Robbie, my man, uh, Spears tore his head, back of his head open. There's another camera angle. I think it was a fan in the front. Ha- go look it up. Uh, there was a different camera angle. What happened was Cody turned his head at the last second. And I can tell you from experience that the way you take a chair shot is stare straight ahead and lower your head. They're supposed to hit you right here. Not on the forehead, but on like the crown of the head, like somewhere between the crown and the middle of the head. Okay, Uh, That's usually where you're supposed to take it. At the very last second, Cody, for whatever reason, did this. All right, Uh, The back of the chair ended up around the back of his head. And so when he hit and then pulled off, it opened up the wound. He was wounded. It's 12 staples. It's legit, folks. It's it's honestly got injury. The, the chair was gimmicked. In other words, the part that you sit on is not an actual steel folding chair. Uh, it was thinner metal. That's why you got the pop. You ever been hit or heard someone hit with an actual Sunday going to meeting steel chair? I have, and I felt it, and it does not go clang. It goes boom, like thud, thud, like a dead thud. Believe me, I felt it, and I heard it, and, it, and I felt it for days after. And there's a thud to it. There's no snap. You know what I mean? Like tinfoil, which is why the chair was gimmicked, but the cut was 100% real. So, there you go. Uh, do, 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 do. It's like WWE complain about all the shows that get put on WrestleMania weekend, but I never heard them complain. Yeah, for sure. No doubt. Um, Mark's already talking about the uh, Kevin Owens thing. I ranted on Wrestle... wrestle on, on, not on WrestleMania, but on my Facebook page. And some of you out there said I was wrong and that they dis- you guys disagreed respectfully. Thank you for that. But said that, they, that you loved the promo. You know, I wrote a whole column about that sucker and I posted it today. I should have posted it on Wednesday. I just didn't get around to it. But yeah, I've I put my feelings out there. We can circle back to it. We're going to go over Stream Rules card in just a, a few minutes. So, uh, Seba, yes. WWE versus AEW. I think it's good competition for both brands. I'm happy to hear JR back in the announce table. Cody make his whole thing is real boss move. Do you think they'll ever take over and beat WWE in ratings and popularity? No. Uh, no, I don't. Hello, Sandy. No, I don't. Uh, I believe that they, they could get them to run for their money in some avenues, in some instances, but no, I don't think see anyone taking a WWE over. Could be wrong. Don't Just don't know if I see it. See my TOG in the background? See? There he is. Say hello. If I talk too much and to him, he'll come over here and want, want me to pet him. He's a real lap dog. So. Um, I can't say his name, Victor. Wicket is his name. He didn't hear me. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Ewok from Jedi. Right. Uh, so what happened was when my kid was younger, I don't mean he was this big. That's well, that's a young kid. When he was younger, it was all gibberish. Uh, only me and his mom could understand what he was saying because he was kind of behind on his speech. So he kind of sounded like an Ewok. So when we got the dog, uh, I said, we should end the dog wicket. And it was perfect. So there you go. There's the name. So. Uh, 
Yeah, the whole the whole thing, Rebecca, was a setup. It was a no we, with a T, Mark with a T, the Ewok from Return of the Jedi. Um, so Rebecca, uh, uh, no, 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 the whole thing was coordinated by WWE and ESPN as a joint venture. It's all in the uh, it's, it's all in the name of continuing to get WWE on ESPN, I suppose. At some point, there was money exchanging hands or a handshake or a wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more, say no more thing between ESPN and WWE. It's very odd. It's very cool. I mean, I'm okay with it, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's one of those things. I'm, I mean, you know, it is what it is, but no, it wasn't like, it wasn't like a pro wrestling award. It was a WWE award. So yeah, it was very, very specific. Wicket, Mark, with a T, with a T, the Ewok. Have we not seen Return of the Jedi, guys? Come on. The, the Ewok that Leia encounters in the jungle on Endor. That's him with the little hood. Come on, guys, keep up. Where's my Star Wars nerds at, folks? You're killing me. So, uh, uh, yeah, we're going to get to Extreme Rules, Sandy. Be patient. Kenny Omega's from my city, Solomon Bars. Do you think he'll get a good... I think sky's the limit for him, especially in the company run by his best friends and run by himself as well. Sky's the limit. So, uh, uh, <laughs> go, Mark. So, yeah. Um, okay, we've been over this. AEW, Chris. Keep up, Chris. So, uh, yes, Chris, uh, uh, you can watch AEW on uh, BR Live. Good luck with the streaming part of it. It was a nightmare for me when I watched Fighter Fest. A nightmare. Hopefully, they've got some of those issues fixed this time around. Okay, so there is your AEW card. We can always talk some more about it if you guys would like to. We're going to go ahead and move on to the next card of the weekend. We are going to talk about, and silly me for not having this thing uh, queued up yet. My, don't mind the clicks, folks. It's just me looking this stuff up. So, I wrote this story actually uh, um, based on the Evolve card coming up. Um uh, and it's also it's also on Wrestling Rumors, so please feel free to go check that out. So I would encourage you, if none of you out there have seen, uh, been able to go see Evolve Wrestling Live, I would encourage you to go see a show. Uh, if it makes its way to your town, I would encourage you to go to YouTube and look this stuff up. I think you'd be more than happy with it. Evolve is a good little company. They, uh, they use good names. They use good talent. Uh, uh, we've been to one of their shows, and it was fun. Uh, I enjoyed it. where I saw, I saw Shane Strickland for the first time, who's now in WWE. As I say, Isaiah Scott in NXT. So yeah, it's uh, it's a good show. It's where Darby Allen came from as well. Um, so all right, so here is the quick lineup for the Evolve show. Are you ready on WWE Network? Here we go. Quick lineup, okay? Josh Briggs, who by the way is back from injury. Uh, he was injured in a, not the show we were at, but he was in an, injured another show. I think he had uh, dislocated his hip, and I think he pretty sure he had surgery. He's back, so. Good for him. Josh Briggs versus Anthony Green with Brandy Lauren. Fatal four-way match, Chris Stallion versus Sean Maluda, who you guys will know from the Cruiserweight Classic, uh, versus Stephen Wall versus Harlem Bravado. If you don't know who Harlem Bravado is, Harlem is an evolved guy, also PWX. We saw him again this past weekend. It's the tw- second time we've seen him. He's good talent. This past weekend, he worked Rocky Romero. Very solid match. So keep your eye on him. Uh, Babatude versus uh, Colby Carino, Stephen Carino's son. Brandy Lauren versus um, uh, Shotzi Blackheart. I'm not familiar with uh, Blackheart, to be honest with you. Anthony Henry versus NXT superstar Arturo Ruiz. Ruiz. Matt Riddle. This, this is the WWE side of it, folks. Matt Riddle versus WWE Cruiserweight Champion Drew Gulak. It's the catch point reunion match. That should be fantastic. Eddie Kingston and Joey Gacy versus AR Fox with Leon Ruff, Alia, and the Skulk. So, uh, that'll be interesting as well. Um I know Kingston. I'm not very familiar with Gacy, but I think I've seen him before. Rough, I don't know much about. Uh, then they have the uh, winner-take-all match between the Evolve champion Austin Theory versus the WWN champion J.D. Drake. J.D. Drake came up under a guy that um, that I've, I was in the business with for a long time. Uh, his name He went under the working name Viper in Hendersonville, North Carolina. Real name Gary Benfield. He gave Drake one of his first big shots, and Drake has went on to... Uh, to do the stuff that he's doing now. So I know that uh, Gary's extremely proud of him, as he should be. And Drake is uh, is a good worker. He's very much in the vein of Dusty Rose. Maybe a little bit of Bam Bam Bigelow thrown in. He's a big guy, but man, he's athletic and he can move in the ring and he can flat out work. So uh, Austin Theory is basically John Cena, uh, for lack of a better term. Great body, great kid, very smart, uh, good to the business. WB is going to sign this guy. It's just a matter of time, my humble opinion. Then you've got uh, NXT Championship match, Adam Cole versus Akira Tozawa. So there you go, folks. There is your Evolve card uh, on the WWE Network this Saturday. So there you go. 
Uh, David says, I've enjoyed him watching AEW so uh, more so than WWE. Looking forward to Fire for the Fallen. Fire for the Fallen is going to be good for sure. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Firefight Watch Aid. You know, I'm Chris. I'm not sure what you asked me, brother. Do you have Firefight Watch AD, AEW? Man, you've lost me. I don't know what you're asking me. You can watch AEW show on BR Live. The rest of the world's watching on the Fight app. I don't think you can watch on the Fight app if you're in the United States. Could be wrong, but I don't think so. Yes, Mark. Uh, I see people say they have enjoyed watching AEW more than WWE. How they've had more than one show. They've had two shows. To be fair. But also there's Being the Elite, which gives you some backstage look and stuff like that. They've had the Road to Fighter Fest, Road to Dull or Nothing, that kind of thing. So, But listen, you can't fault people for liking something new and liking something different. We get a lot of the same shtick from WWE every week, eight days a week. So you can't fault people for that. Uh, Sandy, I think you'll enjoy the show. It's going to be a WWE produced show, obviously, right? So it's going to be heavily WWE influenced. But I'm telling you, man, if if you ever get uh, Evolve coming to your town or to a town near you, I advise you to go see it. I think you'd like the show. So there you go. Um, second, no, Mark. Tomorrow night is the third show. There was Double or Nothing, Fight or Fest, and now Fight for the Fallen. Three shows. Keep up. Mark, it's like I'm giving you a hard time today, man. I'm not trying to. Uh, da, 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 da. Sandy will be on the Fight TV app for you, my friend. Oh, I see. You're talking about Evolve. Oh, I gotcha, I gotcha, I gotcha. Sandy, my apologies. There you go. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, see, when Mark, Miss Lopez just made, just made her point. I love how there is more wrestling to watch. Not as many promos. Okay? Just let people like what they want to like, man. If if it baffles you or whatever, that's them. That's not you. Don't sweat it. It's whatever your personal preference is. If you love WWE and only WWE, go with God. It's perfectly fine. No one's going to fault you for that. It's all personal taste, man. It's all very subjective anyway. Oh, Chris, you're killing me. Listen, AW tomorrow night will be available uh, on BR Life in the United States of America in the 50, okay? BR Live. Outside of the United States, it's on the Fight app. Is everybody clear on that? I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm just saying. You know what I mean? Yeah. Is everyone clear on how you can watch it? You think I'm on their payroll? I'm not, I assure you. And if the show sucks, don't blame me for it and say, Tom told us to watch it. I'm not telling you to watch it. I'm telling you how you can watch it. It's a big difference, man. Uh, da, 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 da. Ba, 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 ba. Where are we? Anyone else got anything for the Evolve? Anything you guys want to talk about? Anything happening tomorrow on WWE Network? Anybody, anybody. Going once, going twice. Anybody, anybody. If not, we're going to move on to the Climax, folks. Night two of the G1 Climax Tournament for the next three days. Climax all up in your eyes uh, on New Japan World. If you don't have New Japan streaming service, I highly advise you get it. It's 10 bucks a month. Uh, you're you'll enjoy it. There's no commitment. You cancel any time. It is so worth your money. If you've got it to spare, I advise you watch it. Huge ton of content going back years. You would very much like it, folks. Thank you, David. I agree with you. Hello, Brad, Minnesota. Hello, Tristan. Welcome back to the show. So, all right. Here's the G1 Climax card uh, that we got coming up tomorrow night. Are you ready? Here's the match card. Uh, Yorimura, Will Ospreay, and Kota Ibushi versus Bushi, Sonata and Evil, Los and Gribanales de Japon. In the first match, Yoshinobu, Kanemaru, Lance Archer from Suzuki Goon versus Chase Owens, Balak Fale from the Bullet Club. In the second match, it's Heels versus Heels if you're keeping score. Rin Narita, Shota Yumino, and Hiroshi Tanahashi versus Carl Fredericks, Clark Connors, and Kenta. The third match, that should be a, a nice match as well. Yoshihashi and Kazuka Okada versus Minoru Suzuki and Zack Sabre Jr. That should be a fine match as well in the fourth match. Then we go to the G1 Climax. Tomorrow night is the opening round of the B-Block Tournament side of the event. Juice Robson versus Shingo Takagi, which should be five-star. That should be so worth the money and so worth you watching. Uh, that match all alone should be fantastic. Uh, John Moxley versus Tai Chi. So there you go. The former Dean Ambrose lunatic fringe as he was known in WWE taking on Tai Chi. The dude that acts like he's singing. Here's the thing. People give Tai Chi crap. He is a member of Suzuki Goon. He's not bad in the ring. But folks, it's Tai Chi. Uh, if anyone can make this interesting, it's, it's uh, Moxley. So we'll see how this all plays out. 
Uh, second match in the G1 Climax B Block Tournament, Toru Yano versus Tetsuya Naito. This should be comedy, but I love Yano, and let's face it, folks, Naito could use a match or two where he's not killing himself or killing his opponent. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. And then we've got uh, uh, two matches left, Tomohiro Ishii. Uh, versus Jeff Cobb, which should be the main event, but it looks like that's going to be go. That's going to go to Jay White and Hiroki Goto. Uh, for my money, Cobb and Ishii will be the best match on the card. I am very much looking forward to that. It should be, as Jr. would put it, a slobber knocker. So yes, tomorrow night, Mark, you're correct. G1 will be on access. I think they will cut out the undercard and put only uh, the the two hours of the last part of the show on the card or on TV. There you go. So. Uh, 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 bu- 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 how's everyone? <laughs> Larry says, I love his singing. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what he's singing. Don't think anyone else knows. We should look that up and translate it, man. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's all goofball, man, but it's all in good fun. So yeah. Anything you guys want to talk about the climax, uh, t- uh, tournament tomorrow night. Did anyone watch the opening night of a block last week on access TV? And if so, what did you think of the event? Because you're truly watching, I'm watching it again right now. And I thought it was top notch. I thought it was, uh, one of their best efforts in America so far, uh, and I was into it. Production value was fine. I thought the timing back and forth to commercial was fine. Uh, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. WWE, take some pointers, okay? Um, I thought it, I thought it was a good show. There was very few uh, screw ups, very few issues I had with anything going on. I thought it was entertaining from start to finish. So yeah. Uh, see, Alberto Dario is going to get his clock clean. Tito will destroy him. I got to tell you, man, I have no idea why these two guys are fighting. I have no clue. Money, money, money. What's up, Ray? Uh, so yeah, I don't know, man. We'll see what happens. Um, hey, listen, listen, I, we can laugh at it all day long, but, uh, let's, I want both guys to be safe. Um, uh, you know, hope, hope they come out of this thing as physically fit and healthy as they are going in. All the best to them. I don't want to see anyone get hurt ever. But uh, I, I got a question why this match is even happening. This fight. Uh, we'll see. I'm not going to lose a lot of sleep over it. Uh, let's see. A lot of people talking about Johnny Impact. I'm telling you, if he goes back, if he goes to A uh, to WWE, I don't know, man. I don't know. If I'm Bischoff or Heyman, I'm going after him. But he'll just be another big fish in a, in a big pond. Let's be honest. Uh, a lot of big fish in that big pond. And a lot of them are drowning. Okay. It's the nature of the beast when you are the biggest company in the world and you are signing all the talent uh, that you can possibly get your hands on. There's only so much TV available for you guys for that roster. I think that's what we're seeing there. I think Nikki Cross will be champion minus Alexa Bliss and Tom looks like Dean. Man, Jeremiah with the Tom looking like Dean Ambrose stuff. I get this all the time. It's funny. Uh, Yeah, Brad, Brad, I'm with you, man. NJPW is entertaining stuff. Danny says the return of Johnny Nitro. Could be. Do I think WWE unify the titles, Israel? You're talking about main championships. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. John Morrison, yes, John Morrison. Um, if I if I'm John, I go to AEW and I'm called Johnny Elite. That's just me. That's just me talking. I don't know. Take or leave it, man. Right? It's kind of like the NBA trades and stuff. You know what I mean? Why? Who's going to go where and that kind of thing? It's interesting to talk about because there's more than just two companies to go to these days, right? So there you go. Like I said at the top of the show, man, best time, one of the best times in pro wrestling history to be a fan of this stuff. You know what I mean? So much to watch, so much to uh, to listen to, to read, to go to, live events, networks, streaming services. Uh, live, live, live. It's awesome. I'm all for it and I dig it. So, Ms. Lopez says Johnny should go to RH. Here's what I'm saying, Miss Lopez. I would say, what's up, Chris? I would say let him go, if only for a few months. Sure. Uh, Johnny Honor. That's different, right? I'm just throwing different last names because it's kind of his shtick, right? So there you go. Tanisha, welcome back to the show, my friend. So uh, Heyman wants to push Strowman. Well, Sandy, everybody wants to push Strowman. Only so far. And then, bam, nothing more. Who knows? Under uh, Heyman, maybe he'll go farther. I don't know. Israel, I'll be honest with you on the Tessa Blanchard thing. I'm not a fan of men versus women in the ring. I don't think a woman needs to prove whether gimmick or storyline or real life or, or, or otherwise, that she is as tough or tougher than a man. I think women don't need to do that, in my humble opinion. I think that the, what I think what impresses me more is when two women on a card outshine every other dude on the card. That impresses me more than anything else. And it's something two women can hang their hat on. You know what I mean? Two female f- performers can say, we stole the show, boys. Good luck following that. You know what I mean? 
That, to me, is more impressive and makes more of a statement than a woman wrestling a man on a card. I'm not trying to be sexist or anything like that. And you know what? If a woman can hang, let her hang. But at the same time, it's not my cup of tea. I'm not crazy about letting my kid watch something like that. Only because I'm trying to teach my kid, you know, you don't physically touch a woman like that. You don't take aggression out on her. Um, She is not to be struck. You're supposed to respect women, hold hold them up, maybe not above you, but hold them up and respect them. You know what I mean? And call me old-fashioned if you want. That's fine. Or outdated, that's fine too. It's how I feel. I don't think I want my 10-year-old seeing a woman getting her butt handed to her in the ring by a man. That's just not something I want to have happen. He's older now and he's smarter. But at the same time, these kind of images don't leave a kid's head. And sometimes they don't leave an adult's head either. And I'm not trying to make more out of it than there should be. And I'm sorry for soapboxing on you guys, but... That's kind of how I feel, so I'm not real up on it. Having said all that, I love me some Tessa Blanchard. She will be in WWE one day. She will work Charlotte Flair and possibly team with Charlotte Flair, forming the, the one of the best versions of the Four Horse Women that could possibly be. And we will say the words tonight. It's Flair and Blanchard versus, again, in our lifetime. And I think that's pretty darn cool. So, there you go. Um... Let's see. Jeremiah said, do you think Moss will be back in WWE at Royal Rumble? No, sir, I do not. I think that boat is sailed. Keith, I agree with you. She's fantastic. Not saying she's not. Never said she wasn't. Uh, bu- 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 I wrote Darren. I uh, got a column coming out tomorrow on the chair shot. Check it out. Go look and find it, if you will, about Sasha. Whether or not she's coming back. She has posted workout videos on her Instagram account where she's been working out recently in the ring. She made a point to post them on Instagram, which is intriguing. Um, I, I speculated that she'll be back on Sunday, but I don't know that for sure. I have no inside information. Maybe she will, maybe she won't. Uh, but my column uh, pretty much hypothesized what, what's going to happen if she does come back. Is she going to be received as a heel or a baby face? We'll see what happens. Um, do, 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 do. Thank you, Jenna. Uh, Israel, I got nothing for you about Rusev, man. The latest I've, I've heard was that he was sent home or went home again. This guy cannot, I don't want to say trouble, but he can't stay off the boss's radar for whatever reason. I don't know. It's a lot of the same thing, I guess. I don't know. Sammy Callahan's contract is up with MLW. I think he'll he's going to impact Miss Lopez. I think he's staying there. I don't see WWE bringing him back. Uh, AW possibly. But they've already got guys that do stupid violence and crazy hardcore and nonsense, you know, garbage stuff. No offense. I don't care what, how that sounds. It's not for me, Okay. You know, I just think in 2019, we could do better. We've seen too much examples. Uh, if nothing else, Hokata and Tanahashi. We've seen that it's possible that two guys can get in the ring and tell an amazing story in 45 minutes without hitting each other with an illegal object or whatever and get just as much reaction as any of those matches have ever gotten over the years. You know what I mean? And make more money doing it. So why would we ever go back to that full time? I just don't understand why we would. It makes no sense to me. Uh, Tanisha Austin is not coming back in terms of coming back to the ring that I know of. I don't think he's coming back to any company specifically, but I could be wrong about that part of it. But no, he's not getting back in the ring. So, um, Jason, I don't have anything on All Japan, brother, and I wish I did. I, that's a company I want to follow, but it's harder. They don't have a streaming service, I don't think. I've never bothered looking them up on Fight TV, on the Fight app. Maybe I need to, to see if they got some content. I'd be willing to pay for some com- content to see them. Um, I do follow their champion. Someone remind me of All Japan's champion name. All Japan champion's name. Oh my god. Uh, Kento Imahara. Kento Miyahara. Yeah, yeah. I've seen some of Kento's stuff. He's really good. Uh, You know, he's really the only guy I know. So, no, I would love to be up on All Japan. I have no problem with that whatsoever. Uh, da, 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 da. Bray's coming back at uh, Extreme Rules. I'm not Bray. I'm sorry. I thought you meant Braun. Bray, I have no clue, man. I have no clue. <laughs> I don't know, man. Crazy. Jeremiah asking about Taker versus Sting. They're teasing the devil out of it, but supposedly it has something to do with the release of uh, not a video game, but some kind of promotional thing or what have you. Um, I, I don't, I think it's too late. I think the ship has sailed. The best time to do it was WrestleMania 30. And instead they put, you know, a, a Triple H against Sting, which was just flat out ridiculous. Uh, was it 30 or 31? Was it 30 or 31? I can't remember. Uh, I think it's 30. But yeah, I think the ship has sailed. 
Do I want to see it? The spectacle of it? Absolutely. Do I want to see the match itself? Probably not. Do I want to see it so we can finally put it to bed? Yeah, I'm good with that. And I, I, I have to admit, I'd probably pop off that match. I'll be honest with you. 31. Thank you, guys. Yeah, because 30 was... Uh, was 30 Taker losing to Brock in the streak ending? And Daniel winning the championship? I think. Pretty sure. So... Okay, folks, so there are two cards. Um, listen, while we're here, let's run down last week's uh, G1 Climax A Block opening night in Dallas, Texas. The first match showing Yeah, Punky 3K versus Tongalo and Tama Tonga. Uh, the Grills of Destiny won that match. Show to Yumino and Tomohiro Ishii versus Rena Rena and Jeff Cobb. Uh, Cobb won that match, pinning uh, Yumino. Uh, Chase Owens and Jay White from the Bullet Club losing to Hiroki Goto and Yoshihashi. Goto pin Owens. Uh, we had Jushin Thunder Liger, Juice Robinson, Toru Yano versus Bushi, Shingo Takagi, and Tetsuya Naito, Los Gribanales de Japon. Uh, Yano pin Bushi. Uh, first match of the Glee and Climax Tournament, A Block, Will Ospreay versus Lance Archer, losing to Lance Archer. No surprise there. Dallas is, uh, is Lance's uh, hometown. Very good match, by the way. Go out of your way to see that one if you haven't seen it yet. It's up on New Japan World now, by the way. This whole show is evil. Uh, losing to Bad Luck Fale in match two of the tournament. Match three, Sonata. Uh, versus Zack Sabre Jr. Sonata beat Zack Sabre Jr. Very good match, by the way. Kota Bushi versus Kenta. Kenta won that match. Uh, and again, no surprise there. Main event, Kazuska Okada versus Hiroshi Tanahashi. Okada winning the match against Tanahashi. Uh, once again, establishing that Okada has surpassed, maybe surpassed him a while back, but that's sort of the company statement, right? But it was a good show all in all. I enjoyed the show. So there you go. Um do I think Seth and Becky win their match Extreme Rules? Yes, Chris, but at the same time, it's WWE, so I don't put anything past them. They could pull the swerve and have both champions or one of the champions lose. Thank you, William. I adore my shirt as well. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I saw the ending to uh, a Tess and Callahan match. Yeah, I like that. I like that as well. Uh, let's see. Daniel Bryan's WWE's best worker. Keith, uh, it's debatable, but I'll go with that. I mean, I think he's one of the best in the world. I've always thought that. I've thought that for years now, to be quite honest with you. Uh, Daniel Lana, the hot blondes. <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, the, the icon didn't get me started. Tom, the reason they tease it is someone made a YouTube video about what Fern Tegel let WWE for... Yeah, but Robbie, I, I... Yeah, but those videos have been around for a long time. Maybe not this one, but they've People have teased this stuff for years. I thought WB was doing something like a promotional video or something of that. They, they even did a video speculating on it. WB, the company itself, did a video speculating on it, but it's they didn't even just, just do it because uh, I've seen it uh, before. But somehow it got unearthed or someone did something. You're right, there's something, but I thought for sure it came from Vince McMahon's company. I could be wrong. Uh, let's see. Who y'all think going to win the triple threat match for tag teams? Tanisha, hi. Um... I, I, I think, it, let's see, triple threat. Triple threat match for tag teams. Are we talking about extreme rules? Because we've not yet hit the card. Yeah, yeah, we're going to hit the card, Tanisha. Hold tight, hold tight. My apologies, I had to get caught up. I'm reviewing a bunch of shows at one time here. Or previewing it, we should say. Next week will be the review show. Think Brock cashing his money in the bank contract extreme rules. I don't know, man. I think they're holding this thing out to the last possible second when everyone least expects it. I don't think it'll be an announced move, and I don't know if it'll even happen the way we think it's going to happen. It could happen on the very first episode of SmackDown when they move to Fox in October. Um, we'll see. I don't know that for a fact. That's just me speculating. No, Tanisha, you're good. No worries. No worries there. Um, <laughs> William presses Brock with a thumbs down. It's funny. Uh, okay, so folks, if you want to, let's go ahead and zip to the Extreme Rules card. You guys want to? A lot of you folks are talking about it. Let's go ahead and hit this, okay? Let's do this. Alistair Black versus Cesaro. Finally, we know it's the Swiss cyborg that was knocking on his door. Knock, knock. Little pig, little pig, let me in. Right? So Black let him in. Now they're going to have a Donnie Brook, a throwdown, a catch as catch can fiasco in the ring, a showdown. Katie bar the door. I could do this all day. <laughs> Should be a good match. I like both guys. Black's been sitting in a dark room cutting uh, weird promos for way too long. Time he got in the ring started working. 
So there you go. Uh, Raw Tag Team Champions Revival versus the Usos. Don't be surprised if Usos win the championships back. I don't know for sure. Just me talking. Braun Strowman versus Bobby Lash last man standing match. Um, interesting to see what happens. They had the big gimmick, hey, hey, through the light board a couple weeks ago. It was interesting. I uh, didn't, uh, didn't make or break my day, right? It was boom, right? That's all I could tell you. That's all I could tell you. It was boom to watch. It was fine. But, you know, eh, I've seen these guys work a lot. It is what it is. But hopefully it'll be a good match. There'll be Cruiserweight Champion Drew Gulak versus Tony Nese. Uh, I think would be a fantastic match. Looking forward to that. United States Champion Ricochet versus AJ Styles. Another good match for these guys. Don't know where in the world it's going. Ricochet uh, looking like kind of a chump, getting smacked around. It is what it is. At least he smacked back, right? AJ reforming the club again. I got mixed emotions on that one, folks. SmackDown Tag Team Championship match. Daniel Bryan and Rowan versus Big E, Xavier Woods and Heavy Machinery. Tanisha, to your point. Um... I think uh, Brian and Rowan retained the tag belts. I've been wrong before. I like Otis a lot. Uh, Tucker, not real high on Tucker. I love New Day. Always have, always will. Be interested to see what happens there. SmackDown Women's Champion Bailey versus Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. Two on one handicap match because they're to be silly with their silly storylines and the silly company with the silly matches. I'm just saying, folks. Um, we'll see what happens here. This would be uh, a great opportunity for Sasha either that night or the following Raw. Don't know if it's going to happen either way, but I think she's coming back. They'll be champion Kofi Kingston versus Samoa Joe. I think Kofi retains. There again, I've been wrong before. We'll see how it goes down. Um, Universal champion Seth Rollins, Raw Women's champion Becky Lynch versus Baron Corbin, Lacey Evans. Winners take all. So if, okay, so if Lacey pins Seth, both titles change hands. If Corbin pins one of them, both titles change hands. It's a nightmare. Uh, it's silly. The whole thing's ridiculous, but it is what it is. Um, Rollins and uh, and uh, Lynch retain, I believe, which leads us to our main event. And yes, yeah, the main event, folks. Brace yourself. The Undertaker and Roman Reigns versus Shane McMahon and Drew McIntyre in a no-holds-barred match. So, um, what do you guys want to talk about the most from the Extreme Rules card? Jason, who you talking to, brother? Today sucks. Sound like you need to stop drinking their Kool-Aid. Jason, who you talking to? You got something to say? Say it, brother. Who oh, Kool-Aid you talking to, talking about, man? Be specific. Don't be vague. If you got something to say, spill it. Uh, New Day sucks? Dude, Jason doesn't like the New... Dude. Jason. Everyone boo Jason for not liking the New Day. Jason, boo to you. Nonsense. New Day's awesome. And by the way, Jason, New Day rocks, okay? <laughs> Come on, man. They're still fun. Come on. They got pancakes. Who doesn't like pancakes? I jest. Um, I like New Day. I've liked them for a long time. I don't see what the problem is. They're still over. It still works. I mean, WWE takes a gimmick and runs it straight into the ground and pounds the crap out of it. Have they done that with New Day? Maybe, but it's still over. It's still working. I don't know how you can be upset about that, man. I don't know. I still like it. <laughs> I love pancakes as well, Danny. So, uh, so anyone else about Extreme Rules? What else you got for me? Thank you, Michael. See, Jason, New Day does rock. Jeez. Kenny Omega's a New Day fan. Very right about that. Uh, da, 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 da. So, uh, man, Jason, we all teamed up on you. All right, let's all take it easy on Jason now. Jason was just forcing his opinion. Uh, Shay made a great point. Finn Balor, IC champ, not on the card. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. A lot of people are speculating that he'll join AJ in the club. We'll see. Um, I, if that happens, that thing's not going to last too long because uh, they need an alpha, alpha male, alpha dog, and it's going to be between Styles and Balor. That will lead to internal strife within the group, within the faction. That would be his rip-off version of the Bullet Club, I'm just saying. Um, we'll see what happens, but yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Finn joined up at some point, man, at some point. So, um, Andrew was speculating on New Day winning the titles and turning heel. People still talking about that, man. Wouldn't it be interesting? Everyone's been, everyone's been talking about Big E turning on Kofi and taking the belt from him, or at least challenging from the belt. I got one for you. I got a better one for you, maybe. What if Xavier and Big E turn heel independent of Kofi? And they cheat like crazy to win the match. And then it shows all three of them backstage. And they're like, look, we got the tag belts. We're awesome. Right? Uh, and Kofi's like, what was that? What, why did, what did you do that for? And they're like, what do you mean we do that for? You got gold. We got gold. It's all good. It's all even now. And Kofi's like, 
You so, but you did you did it that way. You see what I'm saying? And all of a sudden it becomes two of them saying, what are you talking about? You mean that we're not good enough to have belts like you are? Is that what you're saying? Only you should be a champion? That's where the heel turn becomes apparent. And then the dissension in the ranks and the New Day implodes. I think I would prefer that much better over the sudden impact of a holy crap Big E just stabbed him in the back heel turn. Because we've seen that so many times in that company. I think I'd prefer like a gradual progression. What do you guys think about that? I think I'd be down for it. Our truth or Maverick? I love Maverick, Miss Lopez, but our truth all the way. Tanisha wants to know what we think of the 24-7 championship. Um, I think too much of any good thing is too much. Uh, I think 24-7 championship is this far from being too much of a good thing. Because, and here's why I think that. Because eventually it's going to tire. Uh, people will get sick of looking at it and sick of talking about it and sick of seeing it every week. And I think that that's the danger of calling it the 24-7 championship is it's, it's every day, all day, every week. Okay, So we'll see what happens. But I think it's that close to, to being where people turn on it. This is me. Uh, let's see. Jason's still trying to get me riled up. Jason, I'm not going to let you ruin my flow, Jack. Go do that crap on someone else's show. You like the other dude? Go do it on his show. How about that? Man, people just love to talk smack, don't they? Everybody's brave behind a keyboard. Let me just tell you. Everybody's brave behind a keyboard. Okay? That's just how it is. Uh, Where I dis- uh, Brian, I don't know, man. Was I disappointed? Eh. I was, here's why I'm disappointed it wasn't Bray knocking on Alistair's door. I just want this to be done. Put Bray Wyatt back on TV and let's get this rolling. Like, what in the world is stopping this from happening? Uh, it's almost, I don't know what to say. I, I don't even know what to say. It's crazy. And this is nothing against Bray the guy. Bray the man. Don't get me wrong. Nothing against him at all. Wyndham Rotunda. Nothing. It's just, you know, as far as the character. Let's just get this going. What are we doing here, man? What are we doing? Uh, da, 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 da. Do you think Hornswoggle, Hornswoggle going this 24-7 towel to our truth Hornswoggle, you lost me there, Chris. Uh, so what else we got, folks? There's your cards for the weekend. It's a huge weekend. I told you guys, huge show day, huge weekend. Lots of wrestling. Uh, I can't wait. I'm so amped for it. I'm I'm excited. Going to be good stuff. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna try to watch all three tomorrow night. Uh, I'm anxious to see them. I got a buddy coming over. Um, it's funny because in my younger days, we'd have like a, ro- a big room full of us. There was like pushing 10 of us with girlfriends and whatnot, just hanging out, watching wrestling. We'd flip back and forth between Raw and Nitro. Monday Night Wars, Jack. We did it every week. And uh, those were the days. I had some fond memories of that, man. So, what else you got? We're coming up on the hour, folks. Got to make them good. (laughs) Sandy, I think it's called the 7-Eleven European. What is it? The 7-Eleven European. Is that what they call it? What Truth calls it? Yeah, I think you're right. I thought you were missing a word, but maybe not. Oh, so Keith wants to talk about the Owens face turn. Okay. Here's where it gets good. Soapbox time. So, um, how many of you out there thought, how many of you out there think WWE is brilliant, brilliant for the Kevin Owens promo on SmackDown Live against Shane McMahon? By show of hands, everyone out there tell me right now, listening or watching or otherwise, okay? Uh, how many of you out there are praising WWE for the Kevin Owens promo against Shane McMahon? Let's see it. It's okay if you love Owens. I'm talking about if you're praising WWE for this. We all know Kevin can deliver a promo. It's not about whether or not he can do it and make it good. How many of you out there are praising WWE for this? Okay. All right. Mark, thank you. Mark. Thank you, Mark. Okay. For those of you listening and not watching, I got a bunch of people saying that they agree. Pop Bomb 2.0. Paul, thank you. Joby says, who cares? Well, Joby, I care. I wouldn't be talking about it. Everyone else is talking about it, too. They care. Thank you, Delvin. Good point. Okay. Uh, the majority of you saying you loved it, that you think WWE is brilliant. It's a great move. Thank you, Delvin, again, for your point. 
Uh, but if it's all forgotten about three weeks, then what's the point? Tanisha says, what are the cars for there to be paid for you? Oh, Tanisha, we've already been through that. Man, you got to keep up. <laughs> okay, so. Um, all right, so we had some anti-promo. All right, folks, are you ready for this? Tom's take. Yay, here we go. Are you right? Shane, I get your point. All right, are you ready? Here's the point. Brace yourselves. Here it comes. Ready for this? Whose fault was it that Shane's on TV every single week and every single segment call himself the best in the world? Is that Shane McMahon or WWE? You don't have to answer. I'll tell you the answer. It's WWE. It's not Shane McMahon. He's the boss's son, but if you really believe that Shane McMahon goes into business for himself on the mic and calls himself best in the world, puts himself in every segment, puts himself on every segment on TV above other talent, you've lost your mind. This is WWE doing this with Shane McMahon. It could be anybody in this role. They're doing it with the boss's son. For whatever reason, it's the company doing this and making this as silly and as stupid and as irritating and frustrating as they possibly can. The company did this. Now, by the company sending Owens out to tell you that it's stupid and that it shouldn't be happening does not make WWE brilliant. It makes it ridiculous. Don't spoon feed us stupid storylines to begin with. Then you wouldn't have to send Kevin Owens out. You wouldn't have to send CM Punk out. You wouldn't have to send anyone else out there to drop a pipe bomb and tell the world how bad WWE sucks sometimes. You wouldn't have to if WWE didn't suck to begin with. Do you understand? Don't get, listen, speaking of suck, don't get sucked in by this. Don't praise WWE for this. WWE spoon-fed the nonsense to you to begin with. They're the ones that made you sick of Shane. Shane didn't do it. Shane didn't do it. WWE did this, not Shane. You get it? Big difference. They're the ones that spoon-fed it to you and told you Shane McMahon was the best in the world. When We all know it's not true. We all know it's nonsense. We all know he's just being a heel. What we don't know is why a guy that's not a full-time trained professional wrestler is taking up all his TV time. You know why? Because he's a McMahon. Because he's the family. Because WWE believes their top heel should be the family. You get that? Okay? So don't, t- don't praise them and call them brilliant for sending Kevin out there and saying, Kevin... Go out there and spit some truth, yo. Doesn't make a difference. Kevin's great at what he does, but Kevin could have went out there and read the read read the Arby's menu and made you feel it, made you cry like a little girl. Okay, there's a difference. It doesn't matter what he said. The point is, it's WWE's doing in the first place. They did it to you. They're spoon feeding you every week. Don't flip the script and call them brilliant. How's about this? Don't feed me garbage to begin with and make me eat it. I don't want to eat garbage. Does that make sense? That's my soapbox moment of the day. Get me some comments going. Yikes. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. You can't because I don't believe you. <laughs> it's I'm sorry. Listen. Oh, my God. What a br- Oh, it was brilliant. WWE is amazing. No, they're not. We just spent the past two months complaining over this guy. And that how ridiculous this is. Just because WWE allowed Kevin Owens, allowed him to go out and say these things, Let's cut his mic. Come on. Come on. Dude, come on. Kevin didn't rant on Twitter. He didn't go on a talk show apart from WWE and rant. He did this on WWE programming, folks. See what I'm saying? Tom, it's brilliant. No, it's not. You know what's brilliant? Give me a heel in Shane's position, call himself the best in the world that can actually be true. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Shane McMahon's not even close. We know this. We know this. Tom, that's the beauty of it. He's a heel and he believes his own hype. Don't fight me on that. I'm not saying any of that. I get the way heels think. I've been a heel for years. Trust me when I tell you that. All right? I get their mind, their thought process. What I'm saying to you is, when the company spoon feeds you a lousy storyline, don't then praise that company for throwing it back in your face and telling you that they know it's stupid. Because that's lame. That's dumb. Don't fall into that trap. That's all I'm saying to you, man. That's all I'm saying to you. So, man, that felt good to get off my chest. You know what it's, you know what it's, listen, hang on. You know what it's similar to? It's similar to a criminal that commits a crime and then solves that crime. And you're going, oh, he solved the crime. He, oh my God, he's brilliant. He committed the crime. How are you going to congratulate him for solving the crime when he's the one that did it to begin with? It's crazy. It's like your boyfriend dumped you and then found you another boyfriend or something or told you about the boyfriend that cheated on you. He still dumped you. He's still the, the, the instigator. See the sidekicks here. 
Tell me, tell them I'm right. Tell them. You're wrong. He's always right. I'm always right. Tell them that. I'm just He's saying. Wrong. I'm just saying. Listen, it's okay to be entertained by WWE. I'm not saying Tom hates WWE. He hates them. I'm not saying that. I don't hate any company. I want to see WWE make more money this year than they've ever made, and they will. But I want to see them put out good product, which I don't know that they will. Okay? I want the product to be freaking fantastic. It's not. Okay? Give me good wrestling, but give me good storylines to go along with it. They forgot how to do that. Tell me I'm wrong. They've forgotten how to do that. You put 40 riders in one room and they can't figure out how to go to commercial break? Or come back from it? Are you high? <laughs> what? I'm just saying. Yikes. I'm just... It, listen, if I'm wrong, I'm not wrong. Okay? I'm not wrong. It's it. Here's the funny part. I'm not losing sleep over this. I don't care. I don't... It doesn't matter to me what they do. This is not the same guy who would be furious. Oh, this is nonsense. I hate this. They're so dumb. And then proceed to write column after column after column after saying what they should do. Now I'll write one reaction piece of something I didn't like and I'll just let it go. Because what's the point? See what I'm saying? They're not going to change for you or me. Remember how in January they told you that you're going to be the general manager? You're going to be in charge. You're the authority. Did you hear that? We're the authority. Hogwash. Washing a hog. Okay? Period. Don't even come at me like that. Jeez Louise. Insane. Okay, Andrew. I will, you know what, Andrew? I'll take a counter. Okay? Andrew says, I know I'll get heat for this, but I actually enjoy the Shane McMahon best in world gimmick, but that is because he is good at generating heat like Edge. He can put himself in any rival to get another wrestler over. Andrew, thank you for your counterpoint. Andrew, I'm not going to tell you to shut up and tell you that you're wrong. I will respect your opinion to tell you that I appreciate you saying it. But I will counter your counter with this. Shane's not a full-time wrestler. You can respect him all day. But the fact that he's not a full-time performer, which WWE thinks makes him a better heel, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more, say no more, that's what they think because they want you to feel like, well, yeah, I should hate this guy. He is taking TV time away. Kevin Owens said so. Kevin said it because you said it. Kevin said it because you said it, okay? That's why Kevin said it. Kevin doesn't think that. Kevin doesn't care. You want to know why? You want to know why? At the end of the day, these guys are businessmen. And they can sit back all day long and talk about, I didn't get a title. Hmm. I didn't get a main event. Hmm. It doesn't matter. You want to know why it doesn't matter? Because they're businessmen. And if you're a smart businessman, then you will do what's best for business because everybody gets paid better when business is good. Do you see what I'm saying? It doesn't mean they don't have ego. The best pro wrestlers have ego. Uh, for, yeah, Austin had it. Don't bully. Don't think he didn't. You think the Rod didn't have ego? Shut up. The best wrestlers, the best talents in the world have ego, for sure. Not suggesting that they don't. Not suggesting it's a baseball team where they're all working together to win a championship. I'm not saying that either. Everyone's independent contractor. Remember that phrase? Independent contractor. Like I am. Independent contractor. Get it? So yeah, ego is heavily involved. But at the same time, come on. You think people are backstage behind Shane's back going, look at that guy. Just look at him. Taking all the time. I didn't get on TV this week because of that guy. Come on, folks. I got a smart audience. You guys are smarter than that. I know you are. You see what I'm saying? Come on. Oh, da, da, da. Thank you, Miss Lopez. He's making money. And to Miss Lopez's point, even if he doesn't agree with the way WB is thinking, or, did you hear that? My bad. Even if he doesn't agree with the way WB is doing things, uh, it doesn't mean that he's going to go into business for himself. It doesn't mean he's going to uh, go into, on to SmackDown and grab the mic when he's not supposed to grab the mic and say a bunch of stuff he's not supposed to say. And that's just how it is. I'm out of breath, baby. I'm so out of breath. You hear me? I got to take this home, man. Nothing like leaving on a high note. I'm Jordan. I just took the last shot, and I'm going to walk off the court and celebrate. I mean, I think. I don't know. Uh, Andrew says, uh, uh, many of the other wrestlers. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I get it, Andrew. I'm not going to argue point. You're totally right. Uh, but, 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 but. Thanks, Rebecca. I appreciate it. Listen, man, we're going to take this home. I'm sorry to just hit you and run. But I got stuff to do. Like I said, it's my mom's birthday. You're going to go celebrate it with her. So, um, watch some wrestling this weekend. Uh, I got announcements coming up soon. Fingers crossed on where I'm going to be online, hopefully, in terms of my writing career. So, please stay tuned for that. Follow me on Twitter at Tom Clark Writes, W R I T S. Uh, remember, if we're not friends on the Facebook, send me a friend request if you'd like to, or a message on Rest Rumors Instant Messenger, and I will send you a friend request. However, you want to do this, is perfectly fine with me. We can be friends. Sound good? 
Thank you for the great conversation today. Thanks for letting me vent. I appreciate it. We hope you had fun here today. Hope you have fun again next week. The show will be back next week. Uh, Lord willing and the creek doesn't rise. That's where they say it down, where I'm from, baby. Okay? I'm just saying. So uh, next week, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, live here on Wrestling Rumors Facebook Live. Please come back and watch the show. Another episode of Tom Clark's Main Event. That's all we got for you. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for being there. Thanks, thanks, Tony. Thanks, everybody out there for listening and watching and tuning in and respecting. And thank you for everything that you do for me on a weekly basis. I appreciate the love. Right back at you. We will see you next time. For those of you watching and listening, please come back again. Thanks for watching. See you next time on Tom Clark's Main Event.